Good morning, and we're broadcasting. We're live on Monday morning for Augmenture Week. Welcome. Do hope you had a wonderful weekend and excited to take on this, this new week. We're going to dive into something this morning that's really precious. Uh, I want to emphasize before I do that when Augmandino wrote the 10 scrolls that are found in the book, The Greatest Salesman in the World, that... <laughs> He had written the beginning and the end of the book, but had not written the 10 time-tested principles of success. And he just couldn't figure out what to say. Then the night finally came after taking two days off of work. He got that first sentence, today I began a new life. That is so critical in every aspect. If you started every scroll with, today I'm going to begin a new life and greet this day with love in my heart. Today, I'm going to begin a new life, and I'm going to persist until I succeed. Today, I'm going to begin a new life. I'm going to be nature's greatest miracle. It's a great way for us to examine our lives today. Today. Today is the 17th of August. Can you imagine that? 17th of August. Today, we're going to begin a new life. Now, this morning, you look in the mirror, and I go, Dave, I look in the mirror. <laughs> Grow up. Grow up. What I'm saying is mature, stretch, grow. Can you feel it? It's not self-deprecating. It's an invitation. Today, I begin a new life. Today, I shed my old skin, which means I'm going to have a new one, right? Shed my old skin, which have too long suffered the bruises of failure and the wounds of mediocrity. Today. I am born anew, and my birthplace is a vineyard where there's fruit for all. We're born anew. It's a little bit like I'm a baby. I'm just learning some things. I'm willing to shed the skin of I know everything. I've got it all figured out. Uh, I don't know what to do. All that dead skin, we're going to get rid of it. We're going to become teachable, humble, humus, that dark soil in which we're planted in order to ripen. And one of the very first places we're going to want to go is our topic for this morning. This shift in perspective that will change everything. It can be a very hard thing to do. But it is the most important, single most important thing we can do. In scroll two, Og calls it the greatest secret of success in all ventures. He calls it a weapon that no one can defend themselves against. He says it'll melt all hearts like in the sun whose rays soften the coldest clay. Now we just say love, but that can be confusing. It's agape. I want to show you a couple critical pieces in perspective around agape this morning. Agape is Greek for a heightened level of awareness. It's actually seeing people Seeing people, not no no color, no gender, no race, no no religion, nothing. We're seeing seeing the human being, the priceless, intrinsic human being, even in the most challenging person. We're also seeing differently our challenges. And as Og said in scroll two, and most of all. I will do this for myself. I will see myself clearly, truly for my uniqueness and pricelessness. I want to give you a couple of examples. For any of you that are business owners that have employees, let's say you've got this employee that's been late now for five mornings in a row, and now it's Monday morning and they show up an hour late. And they're kind of rushed and hurried and, and you're going, what? We can't do this. They're too important. Uh, there might be a personal assistant. There might be someone who answers the telephones. It might somebody really important. You're going, ah, I just can't run a business with somebody being like this. And so we have started building stories, started building stories last Monday, then Tuesday, then Wednesday. Pretty soon by Friday, we're seeing them as irresponsible. We're seeing them as not caring. Um, all kinds of possibilities, right? And we're going, okay, I just gonna have to call them in and lay the law down. So we call them in, we say, this is the sixth morning in a row that you've been late. 
I just can't have this. We've got a business to run here. I need you on time. Would you be here tomorrow at 8 o'clock? If not, I'm going to probably have to find somebody else to take over this position. We can actually do that if we're not careful. Now, let's change perspective. Let's see this person as a breathing, heart beating, brain that's functioning, human being, priceless, unique, not plugged into a wall. <laughs> they are independent. They walk around without electrical connections to outlets. They are actually independent human beings. And all of a sudden we choose to see them as such. We practice agape. Watch the perspective shift. We call them into the office. And this example can be applied to so many things in our lives. We call them into our office. And we ask. I've noticed that you've been late now for the sixth morning in a row. Is there anything that I should know that could help me understand your circumstances? I'm going to give you two extreme examples, and they are extreme. And this sweet mother of a 12-year-old son says, my son was diagnosed with leukemia. They need to treat him every morning, and the earliest we can get in is 7.30. We finish the treatment, and I get here as fast as I can. I'm driving like a maniac, I promise you, but the traffic's been so awful. I am so sorry. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and we respond. How's your son doing? Well, they're hopeful that if we can finish this treatments, that he could have a full recovery. Hmm, how much longer are their treatments? About two more weeks. Okay. Would you like to take that time off? Oh, no, no, I can't do that. Well, then how about this? Go do the treatments, get your son settled in at home, and then drive carefully to the office. If you need a few extra minutes, take it. If it's 9.30 or 10 before you get here, just when you get here, then we're going to help you just set all of that aside and free your mind and have you just work like crazy for six or seven hours, take a lunch break, and then get home with the understanding that any morning if something happens and you're needed by your son's side, you stay home. Could we agree to this? Oh, that would be incredible. Okay, we'll get through this. Now imagine two or three weeks later, treatment's finished, son better, not always the case with leukemia, but this extreme example, right? And now the employee is back full time, eight to five. This beautiful human being who was valued because we cared to see they were a human. We cared to know that they were facing an almost insurmountable challenge. We cared enough to know. And we served. Can you imagine the relationship, the dedication? I like to use the word from the movie Dave, <laughs> take a bullet for you. Take a bullet for you. Now imagine you hire a personal assistant and they're going to school at night. And so you sit down, tell me about what your objectives are. Well, I want to be a pediatrician. Hmm. You're going to need to get really good grades to get into medical school. Yeah, I know. How hard is it for you to work all day, go to school at night, and get your homework done? That's difficult, but I can do it. How about studying for examinations? Wow. Okay. 
How about if we do this? Let's put on the calendar the nights where you're going to have your exam. And that day, we'll have you come to the office. We'll have you go to the office in the back. We'll only bother you if we have an emergency we cannot handle. And you'll spend your day in that office studying for your exam so that you can get the grades you need to get into medical school. Now imagine that person graduating, getting admitted. Imagine. Can we see this human being? Does it really damage the office to every quarter when they're getting ready to do a final or a midterm that they've got a day back there? How do you think they'll respond on all of the other days? I read an article yesterday that said, Workplace efficiency is up like seven or eight percent and people are working half as much. How is that? The productivity is up in half the time. That should give us an idea of what happens when we can help someone really focus. And to help someone really focus, we see them. We understand them. We show up for them. This shift in perspective changes everything from a personal relationship with a spouse or a committed companion to children to partners in business to business associates to employees to friends it shifts everything you've heard oh they make me so angry we just got to be careful not to retort only you can make yourself angry it's a choice well that's true but what's the governing principle? The governing principle is to step into their world and find out what's happening before we choose the emotional response. Now, so you all know, I'm sharing this with you. I am not going to tell you the details over the weekend, but something happened where I reacted to something prematurely, only to find out it wasn't that at all. And I had to repent, so to speak. Fortunately, nobody knew that except for my sweetheart who watched me react. And I asked her for forgiveness for that reaction. I'm sharing this with you because it's coming out of an experience this weekend that has raised my awareness on this topic and the steps that I want to take. And I thought this morning I would invite you to also take a look. Now, I want to go to the other end of the spectrum, just for conversation. You have an employee that's late for the sixth month, six, excuse me, sixth day in a row, sixth day in a row, and you sit down and, is there anything that would be important for me to know about your circumstances that's impacting you being late? And they say, well, my fraternity brothers have been in town and we've been out drinking every night and I just can't get up on time. New perspective. If you have a hesitancy, and entrepreneurs often do, to not confront challenges. We can't, we're not, well, we challenge, we're challenged being candid because we have enough stress already. There's a million things going on. The last thing we want to do is create more stress. At least they show up at nine o'clock. If I terminate them, I'm on top of everything else. I've got to do app resumes. I've got to do interviews. I've got to hire somebody. I've got to retrain them. At least they're showing up at nine. There are times when we need to take people out of our life because they are emotional vampires. In that case, well, if you can't be here at eight o'clock tomorrow morning, we're going to need to replace you. How important is this job to you? Is it more important than drinking late with your buddies? Clear. Just absolutely crystal clear. And when we terminate someone who has been an emotionally, emotional vampire, we almost always say, wow, oh, I should have done that sooner. There's another place in many of your businesses you'll want to take a look. 
Some of you are in a home-based business trying to grow a business. And one of the tendencies is to try to do too much with too few people and for way too long. <laughs> too much with too few for too long. Now, that doesn't mean we get rid of people. No, I just wish I had better people. I'm going to throw them all away and start over. No. Call out the very best, and that's where you spend your time. But the challenge is your perspective. I'm trying to get them to do certain things to get me to a certain level, but there's too few of them to make that happen. I'm going to expand my business. I'm going to get out of my own way. My fears, instead of judging them for not doing what they said they wanted to do, I'm going to go do what I should have been doing from the very beginning, which is going and connecting with and stepping into the world of more and more and more people who are excited about what I'm doing and would love to join me. As Paul often says, some will, most won't. All could. That's both in joining you, and once they've joined you and made a commitment, them actually keeping it. Some will. Most won't. All could. And it's the all could that keeps us engaged with people. Can you feel this shift in perspective? We're looking into another person's world and really understanding. One of the great risks of entrepreneurs in the Habit Finder assessment, if you haven't taken it, go to habitfinder.com and get it. The fourth section down is called people. The second measurement down is called observant. Observant is a measurement where we are measuring your habits of thinking as it relates to where you focus when you're looking at a human being. Are you seeing their pricelessness, their belief systems, something that's challenging, problems? Are you over-focused on outward appearance? Over 80% of entrepreneurs are focused on outward appearance, how they look, what they said they would do, the car they drive, the house they live in. Either they can't afford what I'm doing or why would they even talk to me? They're too successful. Instead of stepping into their world and finding out what's really happening, we make a judgment, a judgment about whether they're worthy or whether they'd be interested based on how they look. You can take this to the bank this morning. Nothing is as it looks or appears. Nothing. Almost everybody's propping up a facade of okayness when they don't feel that way. And most entrepreneurs have challenged self-esteem. They're questioning their own ability at times because their expectations are not happening fast enough. So they're beating themselves up. And so they come to that conversation with, I don't feel good about me. Ooh, they look really successful. And that creates what's called a straw bridge, something that will not support connection, perspective shifts. And all of these take us back to agape a heightened level of awareness. Let us make the decision today to stop being the judge. The judge. They hurt my child. I want them to be hurt. Let's step into their world. Find out what's really going on in their world. Perhaps they were really damaged as a child. I felt this most powerfully when I was helping my father write his book. There were times when he was hell on wheels. And I know he's in heaven watching this conversation. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> and I love him dearly. But when I got to know his whole life, everything about it, it was so much easier to let go of judgment I'd held since a child. And my judgment of him and his lack of, a, of ability to love just exacerbated his negative response. Now, we don't want to blame that on the child. We don't want to blame that on the father. 
We want to practice agape, step into the world and find out what's really going on. We'll have more compassion, compassion, a willingness to suffer with someone we love. Let us this day. Today I begin a new life. Okay, let's begin one today. And let's begin it in this area. I choose agape. I choose to have a heightened level of awareness. I choose to sit in a restaurant and when someone is not giving me adequate service, I choose to watch the service they're giving. Discovering how many tables they're taking care of and starting to wonder what it must be like in their head to keep track of all of those and feeling our table over here that hasn't been attended to and how do we get to it as busy as they are. And when they finally come over, let us say, I notice you're taking care of five, six tables. How in the world do you keep track of everything? Oh, watch them pour out their hearts. The truth is, in closing, everybody has a wall of resistance behind which they are holding back a significant percentage of their energy and cooperation until they feel safe and understood. Non-adversarial relationship, 40% on average. You imagine outside of that, whether you don't know the person, significantly more. Let us not show up with our own wall, judging the other person's wall. Let us get outside of ourselves. Let us step into their world. Let's find out where they are. And let's get a perspective from which we can practice agape love at a heightened level of awareness. It will open up doors of opportunity. Oh my goodness. I had a couple this last week. Just opens up doors. May we practice this. And if you've got the scrolls, if you don't, go to augmandino.com and download them. Listen to scroll two. It'll help support you in this activity. Go get your habit finder at habitfinder.com. And when you do, look at the fourth section, people. And just take a look at how your thought processes are showing up in terms of people. And then look at yourself and see how your dialogue about you might be keeping you from seeing them accurately. Got that? Because our judgment is often not born out of their situation. It's born out of our own personal judgment of ourselves. Okay, there's the shift for the day. Let's practice this this week. Let's come back next week, better people, with more joy, more love in our hearts. And may this be the best day and best week of your life. Thanks, everyone.